outline and wash sketch. Is it better to start with the outline with your pen or with a watercolor wash? In this video, I will try to answer this question. I will draw these dogs two ways and at the end of the video, you'll be able to compare the results. I will start both pieces the same way. I will lightly outline the contours of the dogs with my pencil. I'm using 50% cotton watercolor paper. The brand is Hippie Crafter. After the preliminary sketch is done, I start drawing using Uniposca acrylic marker. This is brush tip. I prefer those two liner tools like Micron pens or gel pens because the brush tip pen gives me a lot more varied line and I also like the softer feel because sometimes those felt tip pens can feel very stiff in your hand. I feel that switching from painting with the brush to working with those is too drastic of a change. Also acrylic in the marker is not going to run when I start applying the watercolor wash. I try to leave gaps in the outline to avoid making it too rigid. I don't want to encompass with it my doggies. I think leaving little gaps and also varying, like I said, the line thickness makes the finished artwork look more spontaneous. And also I'm hoping it will create the illusion of motion, kind of convey that feeling of motion that I see in the reference photo. This Posca marker is one of the set. I have a black one and a white one and the white one, I will use at the end to add highlights after my watercolor wash is dry. The gaps in my outline are not randomly positioned. I'm looking at the reference photo while squinting my eyes just a little bit. That helps me to see the darkest areas on my subjects on those dogs which I'm trying to paint with a thicker line and if it's a highlight or a light area I try to either use a very fine line there or just leave a gap. I don't see a tail on this one that's closest to me, so I just invented it. I think it looks a little weird without a tail. So I'm really not outlining the dogs. I am drawing the dark accents on the dogs. give them a little bit of a shadow so they have something to stand on. This will be my horizon line. The drawing dries instantaneously with those Uniposca mar markers and they don't smudge. Like I said, they're acrylic. So I can start applying my watercolor wash immediately after I finish the drawing. to get rid of the pencil lines. Actually, before I start doing watercolor, as you know, once you apply watercolor, you can delete the pencil. So I forgot to do that. Let's do that really carefully, get rid of the shavings, and now I can start painting. With watercolor, I would like to create a vignette. I'm not going to cover the whole background. I'm using ultramarine purple, some opera pink, throw in some orange for the dog. I'm going to paint the whole dog with permanent orange. Watercolor vignette is a very useful technique that has many applications. I have a video where I explain the process in detail. I use it to create greeting cards. You might have seen this video recently, but I'll leave you the link in the description one more time, just in case. This is one of the two methods of vignetting your background that I explain in detail in that video. I 
switch to indigo to add the shadows to the darker areas on both dogs. The beauty of line and wash technique is that it's very fast. I already created all the darks with my Posca marker and now I'm leaving a lot of light areas as just paper and all I need to do with watercolor is to add the mid-tones. If I try to do the sketch with watercolor only, it will of course take a lot more time than it does with the help of a marker. So that's why this technique is so often used for on location sketches, because it just makes things a lot easier and a lot faster. Especially if you're sketching in nature, things change very fast, so you need a way to capture everything very quickly. I'm using this in my studio because I wanted to make this recording and talk about this technique, which is one of my favorites. the shadow under the dogs is pretty dark cast shadow maybe dark on the background so they stand out a little better I feel like I have two parallel lines going in the background so let's soften this connect the cast shadow to the background and the first sketch is done so I applied the outline first and I did a watercolor wash second I'm putting this one to the side to dry I still need to add the highlights but I need to let the watercolor dry first I'm going to work on my second sketch, so at the end of the video we can compare the results. Using the same watercolor paper, quick pencil sketch to figure out where these dogs are going to be. If you wanted to practice this technique, but you think it will be too hard for you to draw the dogs, you can always print out the reference photo. I found this one on Facebook in free reference photos for artists group. You can find it there as well or find something similar. And I have a video that explains how to transfer a photo onto watercolor paper using a charcoal rub. I think that's the fastest and the easiest way. All you need is a piece of charcoal. I'll left you the link to the video that explains the process of charcoal rub in detail in the description below. You can check it out. In this one, I am going to work with watercolor first. So I'm basically drawing with the brush using about approximately the same colors. Prominent orange for the dog in the back, some yellow. Again, squinting when looking at the reference photo and trying to find light mid-tone and mid-tone areas. So I am not worried about darkest accents. I will add them with the markers later. And I am trying to leave lighter areas as white of the paper as much as I can. I will have to use my white marker to restore some of the whites but making a, an effort to not cover everything with paint and leave some white paper alone. Just drawing with a brush around those areas. Using very saturated paint right out of, of my wells on the palette. If you watch my videos, you know I like really bright saturated colors and watercolor will lighten quite a bit too. Because this is a quick sketch, I don't want to apply several layers of watercolor, so I'm trying to paint with maximum saturation right from the start, just in one layer. All right, for now it's just a color blob, but hopefully it will take shape when I start adding the darks with the outline, with the marker. I would say it's harder to draw with the brush when you paint with watercolor, but I'm hoping the results will be worth it. Okay, let's work on the background. I'm using yellow as well. I'm going to kind of connect it to that dog in the back. I'm going to soften the cast shadow with some splattering. Let's take that yellow on the other side as well. 
I am again not covering the whole sheet but vignetting my composition just using various shapes of brush strokes to create the illusion of motion and speed those dogs running around and playing all right this is going to be my watercolor wash looks like a giant blob but after it's dry i am going to give it some definition with some marker lines all right my watercolor is dry let's start adding the outlines Again, the outlines are darkest areas that I see in the reference photo and it helps the squint to see them. I'm not going to draw an outline over the whole composition. I'm worried that if I apply too many lines, I will lose that painterly approach and I will lose that illusion of motion in my sketch. That's what we see, you know, when the dog run past you, you don't really see every single detail of them. You just see them kind of blurred. So that's what I'm trying to recreate in my artwork as well. puppy in front is a little harder to paint than the other dog because he's got those markings but again we need to treat them as just light and shadow and not make them too dark because they're not uniformly black if you see they're darker in the shadows and that black is almost gray in sunlight all right this is all the work i'm going to do with the black marker let's switch to white and add back the highlights that disappeared while i was working with watercolor it's also brush brush tip much easier in my opinion to work with than gel pens or something like that that has a hard nib and let's work on the highlights again if you squint you will see them better in the reference photo okay a few touches on both dogs don't want to do too much but adding those highlights really just a, just a few small corrections with the white and let's go back to the first sketch and do the same thing it's now dry make some corrections here as well maybe soften some edges on watercolor with white and here are both sketches side by side my preference is for the second sketch when i did watercolor first and outline second i think it's more painterly i think it looks a lot more spontaneous i think it conveys motion a lot better the first sketch turned out okay but it feels a little bit like the shapes were colored in so there is less connection between the subjects and the background so there is less unity in the first sketch but that's my opinion let me know in comments which sketch you think turned out better tell me if you use line and wash and your art practice and what do you do first the outline or the wash thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you in the next one here on tamara studios channel help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it to see future videos subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published thanks again and stay creative